order of SEAL Team 6 to assassinate a political rival? That's an official act in order to SEAL Team 6? He, he would have to be and would speedily be, you know, uh, uh, impeached and convicted before the criminal what prosecution. If you weren't, what if you weren't? There would be no criminal prosecution, no criminal liability for that? Chief Justice's opinion in Marbury against Madison and uh, uh, and our constitutional tradition and the plain language of the impeachment judgment clause all clearly presuppose that what the founders were concerned about was not. I asked you a yes or no, yes or no question. Could a president who ordered SEAL Team Six to assassinate a political rival who was not impeached would he be subject to criminal prosecution? If he were impeached and convicted first, and so, so your answer is. Is, no. is my answer is qualified? Yes, there is a political process that would have to occur under our, the structure of our constitution, which would require impeachment and conviction by the Senate. In these exceptional cases, as the OLC memo itself points out from the Department of Justice, you'd expect a speedy impeachment and conviction. But what the founders were much more worried about than using criminal prosecution to discipline presidents was what uh, James Madison calls in Federalist Number Forty Seven the you know the, the newfangled and artificial treasons. They were much more concerned about the abuse of the criminal process for political purposes to disable the presidency from factions and political opponents. And of course, that's exactly what we see in this case. I've, I've asked you a, a series of hypotheticals about criminal actions that could be taken by a president and could be considered official acts. And I've asked you, would such a president be subject to criminal prosecution if he's not impeached or convicted? Requirement. And your answer, your yes or no answer is no. I, I believe I said qualified yes if he's impeached and convicted first. Uh, we so may my be saying question the same was thing. okay, so he's not impeached or conviction and convicted. Let's put that aside. You're saying a president could sell pardons, could sell military secrets, could order SEAL Team Six to assassinate a, a political rival. Sale of military secrets strikes me as something that might not be held to be an official act. The sale of pardons is something that's come up historically okay. and was not prosecuted. But your brief so, says that communicating with an executive branch agency is an official act. And communicating with a foreign government is an official act. That's what presidents do. Those are very strange situations. Those are very strange examples of potential official acts. If you could, Chief Justice Marshall said in his medicine, he said, rising directly under Article Two, Section One, that the uh, uh, the courts that the president's official acts are quote never examinable by the courts. And he says it like four different times on pages one sixty four to one sixty six. Well, let me ask you about that then, counsel, because your position is, as I understand it. If a president is impeached or convicted, impeached and convicted by Congress, then he is subject to criminal prosecution, correct? Yeah, be it necessary to say to execution. Is that a yes? Yes. yes? Okay. So therefore, he's not completely and absolutely immune because under the procedure that you concede, he can be prosecuted if there's an impeachment and conviction by the Senate. Very, very formidable structural check against the astonishing radical action of prosecuting a former president with official acts. Right. But you're conceding that presidents can be criminally prosecuted under certain circumstances. Specifically, if they're impeached and convicted, I think that's the plain language of the impeachment judgment clause. And isn't that also a concession that a president can be criminally prosecuted for an official act because presidents can be impeached for official acts? 